as you approach this doorway, I want you to walk up to it and describe it for me. It's a wooden gate, just like a garden gate, you know, the secret garden. Mm. I've got the key, but I already know what's beyond it. And you, you want to go through the gate? It was just one message, like, um, original peoples in America, native people, indigenous. They are still in existence because you cannot destroy the species. That's it. Would you still want to use the key to open the gate and walk through? Sure. Okay, as I count from three to one, I want you to walk through the gate, close it behind you, and move on to the scene. So three, using your key to unlock the gate and opening it up. Two, want you to walk through to the other side, closing the gate behind you and continuing on to what's beyond the gate and tell me what you see or sense. Well, there's a battle going on actually, but I'm trying to ignore it. Um, you know, Americans in red jackets. Yeah. And the, the, the hats that they wore. Um, they're on horses and they're trying to slay the indigenous ones. So they're on horses. The indigenous are at a disadvantage with that. Um, but they do still win and they do still prevail. So why are you showing me that? So the war that she saw in India in her past life, India is still in existence and the Indian people are still there. So that's three times you've shown me the same thing in a different way. What's you will survive. Yeah. This one is so worried about her people. And there's nothing that reassures her that she'll make it through. Her children will be all right and her grandchildren will be all right. There's nothing that reassures her, even showing her these things now. It doesn't help. She has to get through it to know that she'll survive. But even after that, she will never forget. She'll never forget the trauma that they cause her. Can we talk about surviving a bit more? Is this to do with the Foreigners on boats, she's been talking about, or something else. Those men are not here to fight us. They are not. They are just as traumatized as you are. 
my friends who feel captured and are in despair will see a massive turnaround. There will be unity. There will be. You will have no choice. Our country is flooded with migrants for a reason. You are meant to hate them. This one doesn't hate anyone. No matter what nationality they are. Do you get any sense on how that unity comes about? It's in your mind a spark of realisation. Those soldiers know already that the government in the UK is corrupt. They don't want to work for them. They're happy to take the money and go for a ride and have an experience. Some people say that British soldiers will not shoot their own, and that's why they are here. We all bleed the same. Those men do not want to shoot anyone. Nobody does. If people shoot someone, they are never the same. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. Your instinct to love and protect, override, supersede any instruction that you may be given. Stop worrying about the boats. Yes, we are outnumbered. And by definition, we are captured. And that is a genocide of our culture, our tradition, our people. It is temporary. Can we talk more about the fake news and the loose harvesting? This one has tried to point out certain people um, in the alt media are not working for the good. But you know what? You don't have to work it out for other people. You've already worked it out. Let them do it themselves. You'll only be hated for delivering the message. Just turn to them. Fame, thirsty. Like kittens in a basket, meowing for attention. It's really ugly, actually. Mm -hmm. It will all fade away. It will all go. That need for information. So a lot of people have already stopped watching it. I'm not going to mention any names, but you know who they are. Um, some people on YouTube. Some people on Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Over the last 30 years, we've had a bombardment of information that speeded up. It's exponential. Say in the 40s, you would read your paper and that would be it. Then you'd go to the corner shop and you'd get your gossip. Mrs. So-and-so's died. Oh, yeah. She's having an affair, blah, blah, blah. That kind of stuff. But now, 
the information that's dumped on us is actually a large assault. It's an overload. And as we progress forward in time, we'll leave it behind. There won't be a need for it. And it'll just drop off. You get the sense of who it is that controls these narratives. <laughs> oh boy, I'm showing little rats running around. But of course it's not rats and no offence to rats, but it is like, you know, the spinning plate thing, that trick. Mm. Spinning plates on poles. Um, that is the effort, the synchron synchronized effort they have to go through to deliver and orchestrate their lies. This one is doing very well to filter her speech because usually expletives are used to describe them. They just liars, they are clowns. Even the war, the latest one, it's mostly a facade illusion. I guess it's I just think people way. Yeah. Sorry. I think people would just get to the point where they've had enough and they're switching it off. And yeah, that is a slow process. But if you think how long they've taken to build up this reliance on their information, Operation Paperclip, Operation mm -hmm. Mockingbird, that's taken them decades to do this to us, right? So a couple of years, four, five years, to get to the point where we feel saturated with information and we are now repelled by it, that's quick. You talk about the two kind of different types of information we're bombarded with. There's the fear and the dark and then there's the, the love light side. What comes through on those? Does that work the same? Do we just say we've had enough of both of those? Both narratives guide you to look for um, an external saviour. Okay? Love light. It's just as toxic as the loose garnering narrative because all of it disempowers you. You have to go to church. You have to listen to your vicar or whatever. Everything is to stop you from listening to yourself, okay? The love light is operated by the dark. They're showing me that it's the same. It's one of the same. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. And people might find this shocking because it's like giving an adult a dummy or a pacifier. You need to grow up. You don't need the dummy anymore. 
Take the dummy out of your mouth. Use your intuition. What do you think is true? And when you think what you think is true, where did you get it from? Who fed it you? Who told you that? You need to stop it. Please. Grow up. Be independent. This is what it means where it says, um, you're coming to adulthood for the first time. We've been kept as children. They do touch on this in the, um, sort of, what do you call it? A uh, common law and free men talk about this coming of age. It's actually, um, what's happening now. And you know, when the Bible it says, we like little children to enter into heaven. That's the most sick and twisted lie. Because you need to grow up. You get the sense that everyone is going to set themselves free from this disinformation or will some just be trapped in it for a long time? Most people have. I get 75% already have. They won't say anything. You won't know. It's not like we can put a sign in our lounge window and say, hey, I'm bullshit free. How about you? You can't do that. So you do. It's like when they did that illness across the world, you didn't know. Who in your village or city knew what you knew? Your only indicator was those that wore a muzzle. But um, I tell you what, hun, they know. The powers that want to be, they know. Because they know the ratings, programs, TV. And they know trending. They have all that data. They know it's in decline. You know they're panicking, right? Do you know that? Do you think they'll just come up with a new plan or a new distraction when they see the ratings drop? Ah, but what did I tell you? They don't have original thought. They borrow, steal. Um, reproduce. They do not have any chess pieces left on the board. You know this one? She put on her Facebook. Thank you to everyone who put their status as whatever happens next, do not comply. That was trending, and they know that. Why do you think they started the war? Why do you think people get so triggered when you ask them questions that are outside of their beliefs? Because this one's an extrovert, and... She's not very good with boundaries. And when she knows she's right, she's like a dog with a bone. She will not let go. So we try to be subtle. And she did ask a new friend of hers difficult questions. 
and it did make her really uncomfortable. Because you know what? You know if you wear the wrong trousers, uh, the word wrong is in inverted commas. Everyone will look at you for being different. You don't want to be looked at. You don't want to be different. You just want to fit in. And that's why everybody wore a muzzle. And they appeared to comply. But they didn't. They might have worn it, but they did not go to the GPs. But you know what? They didn't do that. You just don't know about it. What was the question? It was about um, people getting triggered when you question their beliefs. All right. What's your favorite food? I couldn't choose. I'm going to say cheese. Mm. Just imagine cheese. You've had cheese all your life, okay? Mm. And now you cannot have any cheese. You'll miss it. You'll think about it. You will smell it and taste it. And you will see it everywhere. Just like if you wanted to get pregnant, you'd see a pregnant woman everywhere you went. It takes a while to retrain the mind. So why they get triggered is because they're in the process of weaning themselves off it and you poked them. You just poked them and shivered them along a bit. And when you go cold turkey off of anything, coffee, sugar, whatever, you get agitated, irritable. That's why. Be gentle. You do make a lot of assumptions. You people make assumptions that others are sheep or muggles. <laughs> All manner of derogatory terms, but um, they're not. I know it's disappointing and heartbreaking to have watched them be poisoned. But they are in horror and shock because they know they made a massive mistake. So for that, be extra gentle. So be patient. It's only been four years since they hit us with it. And it will take another couple of years to sort this out. The truth is coming out. I know you always say, what's going to wake the sleepers? You are making assumptions that they're not awake. because of the virtual signaling that they do. They're just scared. They want to fit in. They don't want to stand out. Don't forget they use threats. They used punishments. Very severe. Punishments and threats that they could not follow through on but you didn't know that. They don't have anything left, you know. They tried everything. This currency, new um, digital, that's a flop. It's a flop. Like it's not going to work. 
we're actually moving away from technology, believe it or not. The technology that is, those medias and interactive platforms that she mentioned. And the internet, that's actually going to go. Yeah, that's going to go because that's the medium that they use to torture you, to control you. In the spiritual community, there was talk about timelines and there's being more than one timeline and if you focus on the one that you want that would just appear before you you know manifest your reality what comes up what do you sense about that i think they're sneaky buggers because actually that is it's commanding you to be display cognitive dissonance like you're not aware of evil and the wrongdoing in the world just concentrate on your bubble of light and your new earth and skip down the yellow brick road I mean come on that is just you know Lucifer was a brightest angel, apparently. The brightest, sparkliest. That's, um, that's the love and light community, the new age stuff. That is a reflection of that. Lucifer fell, didn't it? And so will the new age. Uh, I'm not mentioning any names, but this, um, New Earth is something that normal people create. It's not a thing that you manifest. Why would you manifest it in your mind? You're actually going to have it appear in front of you in the physical, tangible. Okay? That fruit and veg market store that you want instead of the toxic food in the supermarket, that kind of thing. You'll do that. You people don't know how powerful you are. Yeah, manifestation. Think good thoughts. I can think good thoughts. And I can do some woodwork because I enjoy that. I can still hit my thumb with a hammer, okay? It just doesn't work like that. Love and light, truthers, media, news, goodbye. We don't need you. How do we fix the mess? Because this place just seems to be such a mess at the moment. How do we fix all of it? Is that even possible? That's generational. It will be generations to come. You will be all right. I know the world's in a mess, but... This is apocalypse, lifting of the veil, revealing of truth. Not like they present in the Bible. Not quite like that. Part truth, part lies, remember. It has always been a mess. There has always been violence. There has always been torture. It's just that you can see it now. And you are seeing it so that you can clear it up. 
And yes, it is doable. You can clear this up. Actually, there's nothing to clear up. There's only things that must end, right? There's nothing to clear up. So things like abuse or violence that would just end, do you think? Uh, this one watched a documentary the other day, actually two days ago. And it upset her and it made her angry and it gave her Tourette's, you know. But she watched it. And she had a light bulb moment where she realized how very, very slowly through the television and through uh, indecent images and other films, we'll call it, because you don't want to say that word beginning with P, mm. ography. We didn't used to have that, and she knows that it has been purposely put there by these depraved fools that own all the wealth, think they run the world, blah, blah, blah. It's actually been put there on purpose. If you went back to the 20s, 1800s even, there were people that hurt others, but not to this extent. There were people that fancied the opposite sex, but not to this extent. It's been put there on purpose. It's like an infection that spread rapidly. When this one was a little girl, a tiny girl, and if there was kissing on the telly, she'd hide her eyes, she'd be embarrassed, she'd look away. That was a natural instinct. It isn't normal to look at other people doing that. It's something you do in private. I mean, it's ruined relationships, this pography. Um, it's distorted people's views of how another human physically should look. And, um, you know, relationships die because of it. And children get hurt because of it. Because what they've done by putting all those films out and those images and the airbrush and the perfect bodies is make you overthink about it, become overstimulated on those topics. That needs to be reversed. We need to get rid of that. It is poison. It's not right. You see, when you watch a horrid film, mm -hmm. there's nothing, nothing loving about it. It's not love. There's actually a lot of violence and murder involved in making those films. I'm sorry if I went off on a tangent, but I needed to say that. That was good. How do we fix all the mess? There is no mess. There is only endings. Rejoice in that. That's like so good. Things will just stop. You will stop being poisoned in your mind, in your body, in your spirit. No more visual assault, okay? It will go. It will be cleared up. There's only a few people doing it, you know. And what about all the demonic entities 
that seem to be in this place with us. We just can't see them. It's not as much as you think. They make out like there's loads, but actually um, your imagination has been manipulated and walked through film and all the things I mentioned. There's hardly like any of that left. It's just, it's going, I just see it going. It'll go, because it doesn't have the power it used to have. So if, we, if we're not feeding them with fear and loosh, then they will just disappear, do you think, or something else? Most people aren't aware of negative, you call entities, I call lost spirits. There's also um, elementals you create with your mind. They can make a book fall off the bookshelf and throw things across the room. Do you know that? It's you, do, you creating it, so it's you that will dismantle that. Very good. And what is it do you sense we have to do to break free? You're doing it. You are walking away. You're walking away from manipulation and control structures. They're all going. You will only have what you allow in the future and you will only allow what is good for you. Most of the control is um, illusion. Do you think our distant ancestors had to go to school and to learn what they say you learn? And do you think they had to sign bits of paper or present bits of paper that show you are a slave? Your birth certificate is your slave stamp. You don't have chains. You don't have chains right now. It's worse because you've got like a paper trail. A paper trail of hoops that you have jumped through to fit in or to survive or to be able to travel. You don't need them. It's man-made. That's a mess. But it's going. It's touching on illusion. We're meant to believe there are certain people in control who I think are just bad actors. Can we talk about the actors? Like, um, they seem very fake. What do you sense around them? Feel sorry for them. Just feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. It's not just London. They have those hubs, we'll call them hubs, everywhere. Mind control. They drug people, you know, so that they will act how they want them to. So when we talk about the control and the illusion ending, how does that end? How does that part of it end? It will end when people walk away. 
if you sell lemonade and nobody is buying it anymore, you don't sell it. You can't sell it. When people walk away, it's already like unviable for them to continue. But um, they do continue because they're funded by people. They are funded by the people. There's little rumblings here and there of not paying council tax. Um, little pockets of people that do that already. They don't pay. It's like I said before, our ancestors did not pay for anything. Not clothes, not food. Nothing. Now they've got all these little bits and bobs you have to pay for. Potholes filled, bins emptied. You don't need to pay for that. You certainly will not be paying for corrupt organisations, establishments, government, police, schools, hospitals, everything that works against you. It is going to take time. Is there going to be a time when we know everything? Everything. Everything like what? More like, yeah. what is this place? Did we choose to come here on a much deeper, higher level is what I mean by everything? Okay. What? Well, let me just show you one thing that I've seen when you asked the question originally. You know Jack the Ripper? Mm. He was a scapegoat, so that is their creation. It is an illusion mm -hmm. that there is an enemy, uh, external or separate from the governments. There isn't. Uh, yeah. Why do we come here? I don't think you would ask that question if you weren't struggling. This is the most difficult lifetime you've ever had or anyone has ever had. It's unfortunate that you are here at this time where things are in a transitional phase. You didn't go on a spaceship and say, oh, I'll volunteer to help planet Earth. That's, again, an external influence. There is no external influence to your creation, to your being born, to your parents. You wouldn't have this heavy heart and these questions if it was a good lifetime where you harvested the crop in the field and you worked a long, honest day where your weather wasn't messed about with and you got the benefit of the sun and you did not have to worry about things. They bombarded you. But why did you choose to come here? What's your perspective on this today? I chose to come here and I didn't choose to come here. I didn't consent to any of the incidents that happened in my life. The near death experiences. 
but I did choose to come here and expand on my knowledge and experiences. Nobody volunteers to be a tortured person. Not in the spirit realm, not in the stars, not beyond the moon, nowhere in the universe does anybody do that. I came here because of all my past life, experience and knowledge. I just want to help people. I know they can be free. Would you say we're in the fall of the empire? Babylon the Great has fallen. Come out of her, my people. You are doing it. I'm so proud of you. You don't watch television. Babylon is a control, a control system. It is not a place. It's a metaphor. People on YouTube say, oh, Babylon is London. Londonian. I've got all the answers. Oh, look at me. <laughs> they do not. Babylon is everywhere. It's the clothes you buy. It's the food you eat with the labels on. You are walking away. I told you that. You're walking away from commercialism, consumerism. We are doing it. I know it's frustrating because it's so slow. And you think the others aren't catching on. This is the beauty of the evil one's plan. There's good in everything. They are forcing you to walk away. People are hand holding on very tightly to the purse strings right now. Even the comfortable upper class. They're watching the, the pennies. So every plan they have, it's like they shot themselves in the foot. Because when they did the illness throughout the earth, they woke a shit ton of people up. It was amazing. Too funny. That's how stupid they are. Their plans are juvenile. And ill thought out. Yes, it is the fall of the empire. And guess what? The emperor has no clothes. <laughs> what signs will we see if this is the fall of the empire? Are we seeing them now? Yep, it is the fall of the empire. The emperor has no clothes and everybody can see him. As in, it's all an illusion. They don't have control over you. It doesn't matter what pieces of paper and treaties they sign. The who have no power over you. Acts, statutes, legislation, laws, they don't mean anything. Yes, they use fear or prison or um, punishment, fine, if you do the wrong thing. Uh, but um, uh, 
I'm sorry, I've lost my train of thought. We were just talking about the signs that there would be. You're saying it. It's all around you. Everything is shutting down. The banks, the shops. Um, the companies might merge, some of them. When it's cold, the people huddle together, don't they? In a panic because they, like, they know it's the end. And they can try to delay it. Signs you'll see. Remember we talked about grassroots organizations and just normal people. Even if you just got an allotment. And you swap some carrots for the hat you made. Trading, barter. It won't take as long as you think. It won't. When, when people realize their power and they see freedom, and they see a way to freedom by growing their own carrots so that they can buy your hat. They'll do that. Some people won't because they want to fit in. Some people are in love with possessions. They will wait for the majority and they'll look around and say, oh, nobody's going to that shop anymore that charges an arm and a leg. Those people over there, they have what they need and they're trading. Everyone's trading. I'm the only one. I better jump ship. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I want to know who's going to fix the potholes on my road if we <laughs> do we all club together. Club together for what? To fix the potholes on my road. Why would you need to club together? Who's going to do know the, You know the tarmac? Mm. Where do you think it comes from? We can't trade carrots for tarmac, is my point. Okay. You know stone? Mm. It's a God-given resource, if you will. As radical as it may sound, nobody owns that stone. Their tarmac cracks anyway. How about we go back to stone and have cobble roads? Or, or, you know, something more viable than pound land tarmac. That's money making, right? They fill the pothole in with their tarmac that they know doesn't work. They charge you for it council tax, knowing that they'll do it again in two years. Clever, huh? That's the repeat prescription as well. Yeah. They know it doesn't work. You keep taking it and you have to pay. Do you see how they've got you? Nobody clubbed together, Karen. You don't need to. Let's go... A bit, a bit deeper. I want to know if there is a divine plan here, like people say. There's evolution here. Of course the plan is divine. What's happening is divine. It's not strategic, it's organic, you know. How much 
much crap can they bombard you with before they break you? Like being in an abusive relationship, there's only so far you will go. There's only so much you'll take. You'll reach your breaking point and then you'll split up with that person. We are divorcing the government. A divine plan would be another external control influence. No, you discredit yourself. It's you that's doing it. You are divine and you do have a plan. You know when there's a car crash, have you ever witnessed how people work together? Other people around those two cars that crash, they stop their cars and they get out. One phones an ambulance, the other stops the other traffic from flowing. They work together as a team because there's been a crisis, right? And oh my God, has there been a crisis, Karen? There's been a crisis. And you are working it out. You are working together. It might not be in the physical. But do you know what, what this one does by not watching television? Or by speaking to people locally? It's helping other people. It has a knock-on effect. I want to say the ripple effect. In your last session, you said you had to speak your story, speak your truth. Is that still something you think you need to do? I think it will be after when people or the majority realise the powers that be are, are criminals because once the power is taken away from them and given back to the people where it should always have been, I don't feel safe to do that. Um, it's like an aftermath thing. People will tell their stories because it will be safe to do that. And only then will those people that you call sheep or grottles or whatever will get the full extent of the evil that was taking place. Those that don't know um, will be made aware of it. And they have to be made aware of it so it can never happen again. You might think, well, I'm going to die in, what, 40 years or whatever. Who's going to remind people, the new generations, not to let this happen again? You will hand it down, word of mouth. You will, must always tell this era the story, the build-up, the mechanisms, the weapons they use, you must remember. This one's already documented it. Do you sense there's a defining moment that creates this aftermath? When I say aftermath, I only mean when power has well and truly been taken from the evil ones and given back to the people. There's not going to be an explosion or any uh, incident that's, like, catastrophic. I know the uh, truth is want you to think that. Ten days of darkness and near-death experience. What an absolute load of waffle. You know, that's juvenile Boy Scout shit. They uh, ex-military psyop. Ignore it. Stand in your power. Be an individual. It's very toxic to rely on other people. 
it's disempowering. I mean, you do as an infant, a baby, right? Um, it's there again. Grow up. Hmm. Yeah. Well, my last question, and one that we had both discussed, um, talking about external, is there a God? Is there a God of this place? God is within you all. We are spark of creation. I'm afraid the Bible, Torah, Quran, etc. are written for control of the masses. There is truth in it, absolutely. It's this toxic, abusive relationship of a punishment. and You know, most people aren't evil. That, that's how you can tell that they have written that because they don't actually know that most people aren't evil. They don't have a moral compass like we do. If we hurt a living thing, even a spider, we feel bad. It's innate, inherent. It's our natural instinct is to do good, be good. We don't need a rule book. You don't cause other people or things harm. You don't steal from people. You know, you're just basic. For dummies, it's like we don't need all their rules. They are going. It's, it's all part of it. Is there a God? Um, just add another O. Mm -hmm. Everything. Everything that's good is godly. Is there anything else that comes through? I know you you have a couple of hours. Um, we're running out of time a bit. I just wanted to know if there was anything else. You know, you keep saying soon. It keeps coming up in session. Mm -hmm. Soon. And this one even doubts that we are in the fall of the empire and we're going to be free soon because it does feel so heavy and she doubts her own information and intuition you've never felt this bad before I've had four years of prolonged anxiety fight or flight mode to keep my children and myself alive this is not for nothing. And yet, people say soon. I just see a pair of curtains, like black velvet, really dark. You're very close to that and you're going to open them. And I nearly said soon. <laughs> but you are going to open them. And on the other, when you're on the other side of it, and you look back, it's going to take you a while to calm down and be able to relax. Because there won't be any threat. People will realize that there was a man-made. They already know, obviously, but not just man-made, but purposefully orchestrated for destruction and death by them. I don't think there's like one event that will happen. It's a wearing away. It's wearing us down. You can only go so low, then you have to get back up and fight back. And it will be peaceful. You know, I fight back is turning our back. I like that. Lovely. I think we've asked all of the questions we had. Um, 
Thank you for all of those answers.